What's cracking? I'm Nick Danger. You're now tuned in to the R of MV. Welcome to my channel. Thanks for watching the video. Like the channel on the way in, man. Subscribe to the channel and do me a favor and leave it all in the comment section. Today's episode of Beats and Brew featuring Juicy Monkey. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to be talking beats. I got a special uh, one today. I got an episode that's based on questions I've seen in not only the MV1 Verse Labs group, but the NPC gang more than anything. And it is really just basically a, a my progression, right? So I got my MV a couple of years ago, but I waited about six months before I really got into it for some reason. Um, I was busy and it was during the pandemic. It was weird. But when I finally got into it, I got more songs in here than I'm going to let on to right now. But there are ones that mark my progression that I like to get into because a lot of people seem to get this um, this kit and they seem to just seemingly either figure that they're not using it enough or they use it for a few months and then they don't complete a song because they don't make it to the, the vocal part and we're going to address that as well strictly out the box I get my MV out the box Okay, so straight out the box, what I hear are supernatural sounds and 5080 sounds. So, this sound right here, this little patch. Right? I remember hearing this in my Integra 7. So I gravitated towards it. This sound is a very top notch. Roll, uh, rolling lead that is in the 5080 and I heard that so immediately I jumped over on it and I tapped out a beat now this is somebody straight out the box if you could see this it says first project because that's exactly what it is and it's just a simple beat So, so out the box, a simple sequence, just excited that I had some sounds that I recognized, right? So the only thing I accomplished then is seeing that straight out the box, you can make a beat without touching another unit. To me, that's the first element of progression for me is proving that straight out the box, without anything else touching this, I could make a sequence. A little sequence, there's not nothing I'm gonna do with it, but anyway, moving on. After a couple of sounds like that, there's a sequence here that I have. Let's go to the second project, right? So the second project is loaded up. All right. So still pretty much in the ooh, I got three thousand sounds phase. I find these um, these kits that are all in the same key. 
So let's uh, go sequence in. Everything's designed to work together with this kit. So this is something that was new to me, but it was still discovering sounds. But it was also discovering what the new thing is going to be like. So this informed me on what the the stuff that you can download from uh, Zenology or the, the Rolling Cloud that was specifically made for this is going to be like. It's going to be stuff that can work together automatically. All right. And, and you know... Just still fiddling, fiddling around with it, but by this part in the progression, I've under, I understand the clip functions, right? So, in the first beat straight out the box, I basically understood that you can tap out a beat the way you do on an MPC, all through 16 pads in just a simple eight bar loop. With this particular track, I delved more into making parts and using the effects and the clips. I think around the second track is when I actually loaded up the Zen I mean the Zen Beats verb uh, verse lab editor and was able to start making different versions of the clips to make the drums start to change in this one, right? Put a string in here. Uh, put a little, you know, a little this and that. So if I go to sections. on the clips so by the second time I use this thing or by the second sequence one of the biggest things is to basically understand what the clip function so this is where the sequencers on the MV8000 and the MV1 verse lab kind of start to part ways this is becoming um, easier to deal with with the uh, T-Rex style sequencer step sequencer down here and as well as the clip based function, which you don't need the verse lab editor to, to dwell in there. You can do it straight from here. And it's very easy, but I'm pointing at this because you can see the clips here. And to be honest, I'm more comfortable with using the clip function here because the visual is better. Matter of fact, if I can take this down here, you can see. There it is. Yeah, the whole clip layout and whatever. And you can just kind of slide it that way. Um, and on this particular beat, this is what I start to learn, is that this is a clip launching based kind of production. And it kind of has its pros and its cons, but later on, I'm just showing you guys my prog progression via audio. This is where I, I was made very aware of, you can only go eight bars and then you have to empty out the clip and make another eight bars to make 16 bars and so forth and so forth. And even so forth, when you make eight bar loops, it makes when you cut it down to four in the song mode, in the section mode, when you make a section that is an eight bar loop, only play four sections for a certain reason, it kind of sounds good. So anyway, that's where I am in, in, in this part. So let's go to the third uh, track that I made here that actually has third project. So here's a sequence. Okay, in this particular sequence, the thing that stood out to me was how precise I could be with the sequencer. So for all intents and purposes, even when you're using real-time pads to input, you're tapping in your beat a la the way you do finger drumming on NPCs and not using the TR style step recorder to lay your notes. When you go back and edit those notes, 
you can edit them by simply taking a note away from the TR style sequencer. So using the TR style step sequencer to um, edit by way of subtraction is very doable and very easy. You know what I mean? And that's how I did this track. After putting everything in, I took the hi-hats and really emptied out the beginning of the song to make it really sound just kind of, it's made for an MC. And the, the hi-hats are just basically keeping the track, uh, just keeping the metronome. And anywhere I needed a space, I went and deleted every note in that space, leaving the track for about a day or two then coming back to the track I felt different about the drums so I want the drums to move more I want a little groove and I want a little bit more instrumentation so I came up with this just added more parts um, with a slightly different drum feel right and then added those in and went back and created this sequence. What this sequence proved to me in my progression is that you could be very precise with this. Every note, every hi-hat, everything in this sequence is placed exactly where I planned it to be placed. Nothing more. So I was very deliberate in this particular sequence. Now, before I get to the, the next part, I'm gonna tell you that it, all through this, Probably by the second track, I was already using the Verse Lab Editor. So we're not going to call it using the Zen Beats. We're going to call it using the Verse Lab Editor within Zen Beats. Someone in the Verse Lab forum, uh, the, admin, the admin, made a good a good point. For anybody using the MV or looking to use an MV, and you know you have the option to use the screen. The screen is not for deep editing. It's not for controlling the the whole entire unit with the with that with 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 the um with the screen and it's not to make the mv1 a default controller of the zenology or zen beats app it is basically exactly what it said it's a verse lab editor so you can do a lot of the editing functions when you arrive at the arrangement stage in your track in the mixing stage makes it real cool when you pull up these to me for me to pull up these sliders be able to pull up the um, the, the uh, here the plugin. You, you you can pull up the EQ and the compressor on each track, and on the master bus you have access to the M effects and the list, and it's just easier to navigate. Uh, sometimes it's kind of quick quirky, but as far as the touch screen, but that's ha that's something anybody has to get used to. I'm not really really used to touch screens, but I like using this to mix and arrange, and that's where the Verse Lab editor really comes in handy is editing and mixing and arranging your tracks when you finally make it to that stage, right? So yeah, that's what that's about. And then I, I think that by the time I make it to the rest of these tracks, I already know exactly how to use this and what to expect from it. So I don't even approach the Verse Lab editor until I'm ready to arrange and mix the song down. And that's what it's made for. Now, when I say arranging, I mean copying, pasting clips. I mean uh, adjusting levels. If you have a drum uh, pattern or a, a bunch of drum sounds, uh, like the kick and the bass, you can adjust the individual compression there. And then, you know, like I say, using the master bus's effects and what. So after I kind of learned how to tap out, how to feel out a track the way I would do on an NPC um, by via tapping out on the pads and learning to use the subtractive method of subtracting the notes from the actual step sequencer I was thinking about how to use the step sequencer so basically I usually set a tempo by tap tempo which is one of the drawbacks to when you, this thing first came out or even now I don't even think there's a tap tempo on here but since I can't tap out a tempo, you gotta like a pick a straight up tempo, right? So you gotta turn the tempo on and let the metronome, or I mean, excuse me, turn the metronome on and allow that to just click nonstop in every mode. There's no just tapping it out and just being done with it. You let that thing click and then you find the tempo that's in your head on there and then you turn it off, right? So choosing a tempo and just making a track based off a popular tempo is nothing i never really thought of but you know with modern music and something that comes up so 
I was looking at vid a video by Shades Michaels. Shout out to that guy. Uh, he had a bunch of patterns. He said basically he, he's not the type to tap out his beats. He arranges them on the pattern, I mean, on the uh, TRX style recorder, and he had patterns that he was just showing, showing you how to do. So it was one where you had the snare was always on the nines, and it was a popular tempo, I think 130 or something like that. And so I looked at one of his videos and I came up with this. Once I showed myself the pattern, I remember him saying, so let's go over here, so this, here's my, here's my kick, boom, here, boom, 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 you know what I mean? And all the snares on the nines, right here, nine, 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 and it just hits right there every time, right? And so I found this to be a good way to beat short-term beat block. So you come into a session or you, you turn your stuff on and your internal metronome's just not working. So you just pick a tempo, lay the track out like Shades Michael says, and he has several patterns. Matter of fact, I think I'm gonna put his, his link in the description. Go to Shades Michaels and check out his videos. He has patterns for the MV and they, they'll get you started really easy because I made two tracks with the same tempo within about five minutes apart. So I did this and then I turned around and did this one, right? So I changed the key of the MV itself. So every track was uh, on another key, right? And then I took the same path. Uh, let's see. You see the snare still on the nines, right? Nine, snare on the nine. It doesn't move from the nine, but changed the kick and actually took a couple of notes from the kick and placed them with the 808 the sub 808s that you hear right so this track is the exact same tempo and the basically the same pattern as the, as the track I just played and this was teaching myself the TR style sequencer so on these tracks they're not head this track is not heavy on any arrangement because I'm really just still learning like I said I changed the actual key and learned that part so my whole point is that I can hear in this track right here that I'm learning the step sequencer and that I know how to change the tone and the whole key of the song now. So all I gotta do is go back to what I did this, wash, rinse, and repeat. And we're gonna go back to it. So after I made both of those first two the tracks, I go back to the first pattern with the snare on the nines. Remember I had this, right? So now, I got sections with almost nothing in it, sections like this. This was basically the, just made this up, just some kind of intro. I added to that right here. So by now, I'm fully into the step, the TR style step recorder and was able to make so many parts. I made 12 different parts of the song, so I have ample parts to choose from here now. Now, this is a total different workflow for me because I'm not used to using this recorder, and I liked it. So, let's get this song. So, by this part of my progression, I'm actually understanding the sequencer in its entirety. It's a TRX style recording, and real-time recording, along with some of the new features, changing the key, uh, using the shift style when it comes to uh, different pads and different uh, different uh, patches that it applies to, and actually using the style technique for the ratchet hi hats, right? All right. So, in this show, this this particular sequence showed that growth. Now, to be honest, I couldn't have thought of this and tapped it out on my own. I could only do this by borrowing a pattern and using this and borrowing a preset pattern from Mr. S. Shades Michaels. Now, you can vary those patterns as I did on the first, on these two tracks. These two tracks that I just played, they're variations of a, of a similar pattern, but you can do this over and over and over and over again, right? So now, at 
this point, I got to admit that as a standalone unit, all on its own, this thing, this thing is, it does the job. It does the job, man. It's, there's no doubt in my mind at this point in my progression. Uh, the only thing that all four of these tracks share that the next one doesn't is that all those tracks that were played, all those sequences in my progression, never did I use anything else, not even the keyboard trigger. By the next time, I actually had this MIDI hooked in, and now I'm able to use a keyboard to trigger the more melodic, melodic elements in the uh, MB1 version. So, I make it to this sequence. This sequence has opened up a whole different dilemma, but it's a good thing, right? So look, I triggered the keyboard parts by midiing uh, extent, an external keyboard trigger to hear my Phantom Alphabet and it has opened up a whole different way for me to play those patches okay so 16 pads is cool and the MV is made to mimic a keyboard you know but you have to know where the patterns are hook it up to a keyboard is just fantastic so I got a 61 keyboard uh, uh, key, uh, keypad over here to do all the melodic parts now and I can still use the TR style uh, sequencer for steps for my drums and percussion and samples and if I want to tap or if, even if I want to use certain keyboard parts with the pads that's still available but it also opened up a whole nother thing with my phantom so listen hear me out if I just hooked up simply routed the entire phantom which is now routed to my MV8000 and just simply worked with those two in tandem, it'll give me an extra sampler and 800 extra sounds, which is, that doesn't really matter as much as the sampler, the key bed, and maybe the extra percussive track. But one thing it actually adds that I don't hear many people talk about so far is using the internal inputs and recording that signal along with your vocals and everything else. So that will be the next part of my progression in, in learning this. But as far as so far with this track, I know exactly what I'm doing with the sequencer. I know exactly how to make parts and sections to songs and affect those clips and form those sections and songs into one nice composition. Now it's just a matter of an external source of tools. 